Hello, friends, and welcome to Not Just a Girl, your friendly feminist tattoo podcast. I'm Eddie, and I'm back to share with you the experience of artists whose practice is having a positive impact on tattooing. On the ninth episode, we'll be talking about organizing the Not Just a Girl charity flash days, as well as the difference between street shops and private studios and how that might change moving forward. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are the traditional custodians of this land that was stolen and never ceded. I am honoured and grateful to be on the ancestral land of the Awabakal people, and I pay my respect to their elders, past and present, and extend my recognition to their descendants. excited to be chatting to the amazing Melanie Milne today. Mel works at Hot Copper in Melbourne and is known for her colourful and fun traditional tattoos. Mel also happens to be one of the founders of Not Just a Girl um, from the first flash day in 2017 um, and it wouldn't have happened without her. She's amazing. Um, thank you so much Mel for chatting to me today. It's so awesome to have you a part of the podcast. Hey Ed. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I wish we were in person. Like I know. You. It would be so much better. <laughs> I miss like real life conversations. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, what have you what have you been doing in lockdown and are you missing tattooing? Uh, I, I was really missing tattooing for probably the first couple of weeks and then I just went into my slump. Um <laughs> and just lost all motivation in the beginning I was awesome I was like writing myself to-do lists for the day and like getting up <laughs> over and like doing like 10 things a day because I didn't know how long it would last so I wanted to make the most of all the free time that I had and I was like in a big like creative burst it was awesome and then after about two weeks I was like this is shit and <laughs> let's watch tv a whole lot um but I have finished painting my house that we just moved into and that's about as much as I can claim that I've gotten through. Painting a house is pretty huge accomplishment. It started out real good and then I lost a heap of steam for about <laughs> eight weeks. <laughs> Smashed the rest out last week, so it's done now. That's awesome. I saw you were painting like those awesome little Hail Satan crosses. Oh, yeah. So um, Smith & Daughters or the restaurant in Melbourne um, does this exhibition um, but they have a big wall and it's just called The Wall uh, and they've, they've used uh, just tattoo shops and all of the people who work in them to create just whatever they want. They displayed on the wall for I think it was two months and people could yeah. come in and purchase it. Um, so we had our turn at Hot Copper and everyone just did a bunch of whatever. Um, but they supplied us with these these wooden crosses to paint whatever we wanted on them and then and mine sold straight away. When I was painting it and doing like progress shots, I was getting a lot of people hitting me up um, about buying it and I thought oh you know maybe this would be a good way to kind of get a quick buck while we're not working yeah and sold like straight away which was a shock I made seven um awesome and yeah it was heaps of fun I've had heaps of people asking me for them again but once you've painted seven I don't really want to paint them <laughs> anymore done the same thing and they were actually really fiddly and annoying because it's painting on wood so yeah I think I'll just yeah. get something different next time <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they um yeah, they looked amazing. I loved how they had that real like 70s flower child kind of feel, which is very mal. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I bet no, Murph no. Murph's been loving having you home. She has. I think that she's gonna be a bit freaked out when we go back to work. Um she's actually down here on the floor, you can't see her, but she's <laughs> Yeah, she's been really good because my boyfriend's been working from home as well. So she sits in here while he's doing his Zoom mm. meeting to work. And yeah, but we've now got Neil as well, our new puppy. Oh, what kind of puppy is he? He is a American Bulldog cross Staffy. Oh um, my God, so Angel. Someone had adopted him, but they couldn't keep him because their little boy was allergic. Uh, so we mm. got him a week after they got him and uh, he's been awesome. He's in oh. his pen now because he's a 
<laughs> Has is Murph loving him? She fucking hated his gut so like oh, the no. first week. Murph like, doesn't like other dogs very much. She just ignores them. She doesn't play with them. And then we were a bit worried that she would just be like insanely annoyed by him. And then one day she just snapped and started wrestling with him. <sighs> and we were like, oh my god, what is happening? I almost cried because I've never ever seen her play with another dog. Aww. They wrestle for hours. It's amazing. It's actually really annoying now. It's not too anymore at all. <laughs> Started out that way with my cats when they used to, like, the two youngest ones would wrestle. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cute. But then they're like, you know, a claw will get stuck under an eyelid and just like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> like, they'll, they move around the house. So they'll be, like, on the mat and then they'll be in the kitchen and they get up on the lounge next to you and you're, like, trying to, like, <laughs> coffee and you're like watching tv and there's this like dog cyclone next to you just like ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm having a great time. so yeah just being a dog mum while I'm on ISO that's perfect all the dogs yeah. in the world are having the best time oh, the best time yeah. <laughs> we're lucky though at Hot Cup because we've got a little balcony for the dogs so we, we can take them to work so oh that's to awesome <laughs> it'll be good have you been loving being in Melbourne? Because you were originally working in street shops in Sydney and then you've moved to a private studio in Melbourne. That's such a huge change. It was a massive change. It was um, it was actually like a bit of a shock. So I'd left the shop that I was at, um, LDF. I was there for five years in Sydney, in Newtown. Um, and I loved LDF. It was great. But I just it was time for a change. Um, and so I decided to just travel around and go to different shops. And I spent my intention was to do it for about six months and then kind of figure out where I wanted to be. And so I just um, I left and went uh, up to Westside and worked um, there, which was amazing to work with Matt Cunnington, who's one of my favourite tattooers in the whole world. He's so incredible. Yeah, he's the best. Um, so to work with him for a month was amazing. Um, and I took Murph with me and she came to work and we had just like, such a good time and then after that I came back to Sydney for about a week just to pop in and see everyone and then I headed down to Melbourne to work uh, at Hot Copper with Claire and I, I never ever saw myself living in Melbourne because I fucking hate being cold <laughs> it's horrible uh, and after I left after I left that um that one month get spot at Westside I was like I could see myself living in Brisbane like I've got a bunch of mates there it's nice and sunny uh, it's just, it's a big country town, good old yeah. Brisbane. Um, and so I thought, you know, I could probably see myself here, uh, but I'll go to Melbourne for a month, see how I like it. And I went down there and I worked with Claire and Claire's been kind of bugging me for a while to move to Melbourne. <laughs> when are you going to move to Melbourne? When are you going to move to Melbourne? <laughs> no way, it's too cold, no beach, shit. Um, and then I think on the third week of my guest spot, I actually met my boyfriend and we went out on a date and then that was kind of it. And I, it was just hooked and I had to move to Melbourne. <laughs> so it's here the I am. cutest little love story ever. I've like that whole love at first sight thing. Oh my God, he's the best. <laughs> yeah, so he got me. Now I'm here. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm actually loving it. I, I always saw myself as a street shop tattooer and, and I, I love that environment and I, I do miss it, definitely. Mm. Um, but Whole Copper is one of the most amazing places to work in the world. Claire is just an incredible boss. She's got yeah. like just the absolute right attitude, you know. She's not about us all being money makers at all, which yeah. is, it tends to be the case when you do work in a street shop. Um, you know, they just want you churning out work, which is fine. I like that. I like being busy. Um, but it has also been nice to have been kind of forced back a bit from that because yeah. I don't have here that I had in Sydney and there isn't people just walking in off the street so I do kind of I'm forced to just take my time a bit more yeah like with everything, you know I've got more time to draw I've got more time to paint I've got more time to tattoo um rather than just going all right cool what's next yeah and, oh, it's been it's been good and uh and I am really enjoying Melbourne now in the beginning I was like oh my god I moved here in March <laughs> I think by April it was freezing so March last year, um, yeah, by April it was freezing and I was just like, what have I done? This is a nightmare. <laughs> but I'm actually not that cold right now and it's getting pretty cold. That's so, awesome. You've acclimatised. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Look at me go. <laughs> yeah, and like it's such, 
an incredible lineup of artists at that studio too. So just being surrounded by that caliber of work would be so yeah. inspiring. It's amazing. And you know what as well? Like every shop I've ever worked at, I've been one of maybe two girls, sometimes three, but it's always been like 80% men in every shop I've ever worked at. And I, I will admit I was a bit nervous about going to a shop that was all women. Yeah. Because I, I am a bit more used to people being quite like boisterous and loud and even kind of like the inappropriate jokes I do enjoy a little bit. And <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's different. And I was a bit worried about it being kind of a bit, um, a bit quiet you know yeah uh, and it definitely is a different vibe but it is the most drama free environment <laughs> people are just so happy to be there everyone loves their job and everyone loves each other everyone's really really encouraging and supportive and it's so nice and there's no one fighting over walk-ins and there's no like 40 year old dudes arguing over like just dumb bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome I love in an old girl shop it's great yeah. oh actually sorry our shop manager is a boy <laughs> it's definitely a different dynamic like because I like we've we've only recently got Paul working with us but for the past five years it's just been like women and de- like, it's just such a different dynamic it's more really? It's more loving and nurturing and kind and not not in a way of where like women are expected to be that way. It's just that we don't have to live up to this bravado anymore or like meet this hype so that energy is able to go to other places and we just want to uplift each other. Yeah, you're not trying to fight to be alpha male or anything like that. You know, you're not you're not trying to hide your softer sensitive side so that people you know, will respect you. You're just being yeah. yourself and you don't have to compete with anyone. It's really lovely. Yeah. I find in those kind of studios as well, there tends to be less hierarchy. Like, I mean, just from what I know with Claire, it's not like I'm the boss and you're oh, okay. working for me. You know, it's like we're in it together. Yeah. Pretty much all the men I've worked for have been that that I'm the boss type guy, you know, they have like that commanding presence when they walk in, everyone kind of is a bit on edge. Um, and it's not, I don't know if it's always deserved. It's just like this natural thing that happens. Um, but it's not like that at all, especially with Claire. It's just like, I'm super excited when she comes in. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Which is great. It's just the best place to work. I hope she watches this. Yeah. And, I, I actually I actually asked her if, if I can interview her, so I think I will be at some point in the future. She's so amazing. I actually ran into her at Bunnings like two days ago. I was like, oh, it's going to go, oh, my God. And we just hugged and put over on us. We're going to get arrested. <laughs> 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 she's so she's it's one like, of those artists you fangirl over. Like you meet I her know. and you get butterflies. And you're like, oh. Every time she like posts something, I'm like, oh, what is it? And then I get to see it. I'm like, fuck her for being so good. Oh. Yeah. She I, is absolutely yeah. loving ISO, by the way. Loving it. <laughs> <laughs> she just paints and draws. Like, she, I mean, when, I guess she she's prepared for it because she had time down with her arm, like yeah. with the with wrist. Yeah. 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 Oh, she loved it. She's having the best time. I, I wish I had like uh, one tenth of of her like uh drive to create i don't like it's just like <laughs> out the window when i'm really busy at work i am like i don't know what it is i think it's just like productivity breeds productivity yeah like when i'm when i'm flat out tattooing all i want is like a day off where i can just paint whatever i want and then when i have that day off i'm just like eh. <laughs> which i was tattooing and then when i have like two months off i'm like I know I'm going to go back to work and just kick myself and not, you know, using this time more wisely, but I think everyone's a little bit in that boat. Yeah. It's hard to like find the en- energy when there's no end game. There's You don't know when you get to go back to work. It's just yeah. Groundhog Day. Totally. If, if, if they had said, if they, if they came and said, you know, you're going back to work in two weeks, 
I would be like, shit, I've got two weeks. Cool. What am I going to do? I'm going to draw heaps of like designs up so that when I go back, I can title a bunch of stuff that I want to do. But at this point, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think about drawing a tattoo design. Like, if, like I've sat down to try to do it a couple of times and it's like, mm, no, nope. Yeah. Definitely just not even in that headspace. I can't even think that way right now. Yeah, I've done a few commissions um, just to, you know, to keep my like food on the table um and even that it's just really hard to get started once I'm started it's okay you know it's like anything that we do you're just like cool once you're in it you're in it but it's just that like getting yourself to the point where you sit down and and start something especially when it's a commission and it's not for you and it's a client brief it's so much harder yeah yeah it's just like drawing a tattoo you know like but you're you're really I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, you will. You you've always been so good at that though, like giving clients what they want, and I, I like I love how that's always been a really important part of your um, practice. That I, you've you've told me before how you care more about making your client happy than you do about putting yourself into everything. Yeah, and I think that just comes from working in street shops for. For you know, forever. Um, at the end of this year, will be like my tenth year tattooing, and I've spent nine of those working in street shops. And you clients aren't always coming to you for your specific style. Like, luckily, in the in the last few years, it's been more of the case for me, which has been really cool. Yeah. But I still, always, I'm happy to tattoo anyone on anything, as long as I think I can do a decent job of it. <laughs> but I think and and I think it started out less less of 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 trying to please the customer and more of just trying to make it easier on myself in the beginning because yeah. people will come in and they show you the, your ref, their reference photos and 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 what they want and you get a really you know a good idea of, of what they're going to be happy with just from what they like and so I always, when I would be drawing stuff, I find myself drawing in several different styles or like slight variations because you know that you're going to have to draw it less times if you just get it right for them first. Though. Yeah. You know? and, and that's part of working in a street shop. Like I can see this, this, you know, lady brought in a butterfly that she wants and it's a bit more kind of uh, 90s street shop flash style than maybe a traditional one that I would draw if I had the choice. But I know if I draw my version, she's going to want it a bit more her way. And at the end of the day, I see the tattoo for a couple of hours. She sees it for the rest of her life. So yeah. it's more about making sure she walks out happy. She's more likely to come back. She's more likely to trust me maybe the next few times than I can put my own spin on it. But at the end of the day, I just want them to get the tattoo they want. And also, like, it's just, I think it's more rewarding. You know, you have a better experience with the customer. Yeah. Than if you spend an hour trying to push them towards getting this thing that you want to do. It's like, that's what that's what your flash is for. You know, you can draw whatever yeah. you want. Like flash, if people want to get it, they'll get it. But if someone has approached you and said, hey, this is what I want, you know, you, you, you owe it to them to respect that a bit. And you obviously, within reason, you know, like someone yeah. comes in with ridiculous that's not going to work or something that's just absolutely hideous, you just, you say no, you know, rather than, than, than forcing them to get something they didn't want. Yeah. And I think that's important. And I, I, see it, I see it a lot, especially with people who never worked in street shops. They don't understand that. Yeah. And they, and they think that, uh, you know, it's all about their kind of, in, uh, like their own artistic uh integrity and, and they have to push like their product on the customer it's like it's not what it's about you don't have to wear that for the rest of your life and I totally appreciate people who just want to do one thing and they say no to other stuff like amen to that like that's amazing yeah but I don't know I I still enjoy telling things that I don't you know that I stuff that I don't do every day I like that yeah stuff. it can be you- yeah you see people who do the same tattoo like all the time with the same color palette every day and you're just like cool but aren't you bored yeah and sometimes you can limit yourself for future growth as well if you don't have a little oh. bit of versatility in there yeah yeah and people see you just like they look at your instagram or your online profile or and they just see the same kind of four or five tattoos same subject matter same color palette and at some point they go 
well, I don't want that because there's 30 other people who have that. Yeah. And it does get a bit annoying because there was a, a, a brief moment where it was happening to me. Like I've done the pants with flowers in it like 30 times. <laughs> I love I will try to do pants every day of the week. I love it. It's awesome. But I do try to change it up a little bit because you don't want – and it's one of those cases where it's something I put on my flash so people see it and they're like, cool. But I also don't want to give – someone the same tattoo over and over again yeah so you try to say hey like let's do a different color or let's try a different flower and sometimes people are like no I want that one that you already did and I'm like okay it's your tattoo you can have whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> so it goes it goes both ways it's like yeah I give people what they want but sometimes people just want the same thing you've done a million times <laughs> yeah there's really like there's so many different kind of clients and client expectations and that's why there's such a place for all of these different kinds of tattooers mm, totally yeah yeah and like, there is just so many like kind of sub genres of tattooing these days as well yeah. like people uh, get really old school about it and and say like that tattooing is just not what it's used to be it's like well the clients aren't what they used to be either you yeah know, it used to the clients would just walk in and because there was such a limit to what was available you know you'd walk in and there'd be a flash on the wall and you pick something and it's a really cool, like, ideology and a really, like, cool tradition and we'll look back at it and go, that's, really, that's how, should, like, tattooing should be. And it's great, but it's also clients are changing, you know, and they want that they want and there's someone out there is going to give it to them. So yeah. can't be mad at other people for being opportunistic about it. Like, I don't really love the kind of trendy single line, um, like, backyard prison tap thing <laughs> happening I don't love it but if I was making thousands of dollars a week from doing that like I'm not gonna stop you know <laughs> yeah if people are coming to me and asking for it like go for it that's yeah. fine there's a demand there so there's a demand there I don't like it's, it's not something I'll get but I don't care I don't like like you know real color realism portraiture but people fucking love it they really do don't i i've never understood it but they love and it the people who are doing it are incredible obviously yeah like that be able to sit there and tattoo like you know a wet face portrait amazing for 10 oh, hours <sighs> 10 hours oh my god i can't even i don't like sitting with it, the same person for more than three hours i'm like no nah. Even if it's a sick tattoo, I'm like, oh, I, no, three hours is my max. <laughs> three hours is my max. I'm, that's enough looking at the same thing. I yeah. Start yeah. So I don't know how they do it and they're incredible artists, but it's not for me. And it's exactly the same thing. It's like people with so many different, so many different subgenres of tattooing now and so many different subgenres of clients. Like, yeah. There's a thing for everyone, I guess. Yeah. I think like that whole, like this whole social thing of instant gratification where you can just click on the internet and get everything you want straight away. It's totally changed the way people interact with tattooers and what they expect from us. Yeah, totally. Like the, just the questions that you get in that, that other inbox. Yeah. The one talk, I avoid. <laughs> yeah, totally. People talk to you like a robot and not like a person. And I hate that. Like I'm not a very tech savvy person. And if I could go back to not having Instagram, that would be great. But like we're of the generation that built their careers on Instagram. Yeah. So we are nothing without it, unfortunately. Yeah. I think and, I had a year without it. Like when I first, cause I'm, I was yeah. 10 years at the start of this year. And yeah. yeah, I think I had a year before I kind of signed up. And then it was like, just, it changed everything. Yeah. Oh, I know. Right. I remember like when I would first start, I remember when I did my first guest spot ever, uh, it was at Mimsy's when she was out at Annalie. At not at Annalie I did my first guest spot there too. Yeah. I think a lot of people did. <laughs> out at Archerfield at the airport. And, um, and I remember, I think I had like a thousand followers at the time and I posted that I was going to be doing a guess what. And I got 40 emails for this one guess what. And wow. that's horrible, horrible. <laughs> and I feel like straight away. And that's just like the difference in, in how small it, like the Instagram community was then for like tattoo clients. Like I remember some of the first people that like 
followed me. It was like um, Doug Hardy and people like that. And it's like, I was doing horrible tattoos and here's this like, here's Doug Hardy following me because there's just not that many of us on Instagram. Yeah. You know, we followed each other and it was a really tight community and people who wanted to get tattoo follow you. And it was really serious. And now it's just people who like you, colourful photos. They follow you. They're never going to get tattooed by you. They're yeah. Like, it's looking, it's fine. <laughs> but, you know, but it was a real kind of tangible thing that we were all using to, to promote ourselves. And it worked. Uh, and it just, I don't find it doesn't work as much now. I agree. It's like, become I, more I, about a lifestyle rather than the product. Totally. Like, I will post... Uh, and it's obviously, you know, the algorithm's changed and people don't see things um, chronologically anymore and it's just not as effective. Like I can post it and I've got a bunch more followers to years ago and I can post, say, that I'm going to Sydney to do a guest spot and I get maybe one or two emails and then maybe like a couple of days later I'll post again I'll get one or two more. You know, it's yeah. just, it doesn't work in the same way. It's, yeah. it's not as but we were all just slaves to it still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> like the amount of time we spend on it. No, I've, I've been, and we're all, I think, guilty of it because you just find yourself scrolling and like, you know, what for? What am I looking at this for? Like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not can't, like talking to anyone. I'm just looking at nonsense and then looking at ads. <laughs> It's just, yeah, I wish, I wish I could just put it in a bin, but I can't. I can't. No. No, my business relies on it, unfortunately. Yeah. And the way that it, they've got us now is that we have to use it more to be seen more. Um, yeah. I just hate that. I wish I could just dump a photo or do a post and leave it and my inbox would fill up, but it's not, you know, they want engagement and they want you to contact people. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to adjust the way I use it to find like a, a happier balance with that. Like, you know, like I talk about all the time how much I think community is important. So I've just been like, okay, so it wants me to be engaging with people so I can get them to view me more. So I'm just going to engage with people I'm interested in and just react with love hearts to people's yeah. stories or tell people I think they're wonderful or like compliment somebody's tattoo. And then that way I'm like, I'm doing something nice. Maybe I'm making someone's day and I'm also kind of getting what I need out of Instagram in return. Yeah. It's a good, it's kind of like the only, I think way that you can do it without just being like, without it being kind of negative, you're just spending hours on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. oh, hold on. Come up and click that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's it's actually going to be really interesting to see what the future holds for tattooing, whether it be like in the next media platform or even like I'm really interested to see how this current situation is going to affect street shops because I can't imagine tattooers getting off, I guess, an education in versatility without street shops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the, what what will tattooing like look like you know i don't know hey it's 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 getting it's getting so um filtered into these different kind of categories and and as well i was thinking the other day about like people who are starting tattooing now and most of the people who i kind of see breaking into it are people who are kind of like well established in social media already yeah and you know maybe they're like an artist or an illustrator or 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 even just like you know someone who's got a cool look and people follow them um and so they they kind of break into tattooing because they've already got the clientele yeah and and so you know it's not like us where we had to kind of you know we were no one um but we like to draw and then we go into a shop and we learn to tattoo and then we tattoo what comes in the door it's for them they you know they've already got a product and they've already got a market they just they they just need like a, a way to make money off it yeah and seeing that a little bit and i don't know how i feel about it but that's i think that's the way that tattooing goes now it's like there's people who who are going to be doing their whole career based on this one kind of 
So say someone like does a particular style of drawing uh, and everyone loves it and they're just going to tattoo that. They don't have to kind of come up through the ladder like we did. Yeah. Or, and I, I think that those are the people I worry about the most mm. because how long can that go? Like how long can you support yourself on that? Yeah, absolutely. And like I, I feel sad for the people who didn't get to do the Cherry Creek butterflies or the boog kind of script or um, I don't know like there's like Tony Ranger I think it's a Tony Ranger show. and it's um these three like futuristic dragons and they're black and gray and they're like one of them's got his arms crossed and they've got like like Terminator like a robot parts oh my and, god oh, 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 <laughs> and I just whenever I think of because uh the first time I worked at um Tattoo Nation at Wentworth Bill in Sydney we had a lot of like uh, Cherry Creek, a lot of Gary Davis and, and 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 Tony Ranger, all that kind of stuff up on the walls, and it's just burned into my retinas. This black <laughs> like sheep, I love it. It's amazing. Everyone <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, I think you should just laser off on the photos and just get that. Just <laughs> <laughs> that one, and then the transparent butterfly that's made of tiger's eyes. Oh my god, I've tattooed that so many times. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I think I might do an updated version or something. That would be I would I would love to see just like a whole bunch of people doing their versions of old Cherry Creek and just like we should make a book of like Cherry Creek for the new age. The new age, yeah. And it's just like it's so, you know, like I don't know if you can use the word nostalgic if it's only ten years ago, but <laughs> like it just it is, it is seeing that stuff is really nostalgic. I yeah makes me happy because at the time when I was doing my apprenticeship I was like this is horrible and I was crying <laughs> yep. it was really hard but I look back at it now I'm like oh what a good time <laughs> I know it feels so, like so, such another world though it, it feels like such another world and I think it's just having it's changed so much like it was still so not underground but it was it was a you know a lot more of an alternative lifestyle and I just I don't find it is that anymore you know like yeah I don't think you can call tattooing alternative, especially in the state that it's in and the way that it's done now. And yeah. how <clears throat> no one, I don't think many people are scared to walk into a tattoo shop these days. No, it's gone from being metal to pop. It has, it totally has. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah. I like pop, you know? Yeah. But same. <laughs> I didn't get into tattooing because I thought it was pop, you know? <laughs> yeah you kind of get into it because you don't want you don't want to follow that same nine to five path you want something different in life yeah you totally do yeah and I don't think it's ever going to be a nine to five thing like there's elements of it you know where you see tattoo shops popping up in shopping centers and 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 courses being sold on Facebook oh I hate that there's elements of it that you're just like, Ugh. but just stay away from it, you know? Stay yeah. away from it, doing your own thing and, and try to keep tattooing metal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's funny how you come full circle because I remember in my first year of tattooing doing um, a tribal, you know, that 90s tribal, oh, white yeah, dude yeah. tribal half sleeve. And it that was like, like oh, it was so, it was <laughs> so bad. And I, I was like, literally having micro sleeps doing it yeah and I yeah. hated it and I was like I am never doing tribal again and for all of these years I didn't do it again but then yeah. recently I did a little little um 90s tribal thing on my apprentice and I was like this is the most fun I've had in so long yeah. and like there used to be uh we would we would place bets on people walking into the shop when I worked at Winnie and you would you would you would say like what what you thought that they were coming in to get, and it was either tribal or it was like a Dwardian script down the back of the arm, <laughs> like whatever they wanted to say. But the tribal image was always if you googled at the time if you googled tribal there was a like tribal tattoo there was this image that was a, an underwear ad and it was a guy photoshopped and it was like a uh, full sleeve his pec and down the side of his ribs and it was really poorly photoshopped. Um, like tribal design, but people would bring that in as reference. It was like the second or third photo that would come up on Google, and people would bring it in as reference like daily. <laughs> like not not even kidding, just daily. And the amount of times I saw that done, 
And I actually tattooed it once myself. Uh, and at the time, the shop that I worked at, nobody used mags. I'd never heard of a mag. I'd never seen oh. one. Um, and everyone just used round shaders. So all the tribal that I did was with a round shader. Oh, and my it took God. Forever. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, forever. But you know, like, it's, it's a good way to get solid, solid tattoos yeah. with a round shader. I think I was using like five mags and seven mags, so not huge, but that's still easier than a, a round oh, shader. I've never seen one. I've never seen one. And when I went to the first time I did, I was just like, whoa, what is that? That's crazy. But at that shop, like there was weird shit, you know. We we all shared inks, like the shop supplied everyone's ink and we had this like big set of classics. So it was cool. I wish I could go back and make more. Uh, and we all shared tubes. So when I was apprenticing there, I literally just scrubbed tubes all day and people would come in and be like, shit, I need like a three-liner, a seven-liner. Have you got any? And I'd be like under the pump trying to make sure I'd scrub enough tubes so everyone could continue tattooing because the shop was open from 11 a.m. to midnight. Wow. And then, and then to 3 a.m. on like Friday and Saturday. So just constantly scrubbing tubes for like 12 hours a day. Was it busy that late at night? Oh, my God. It was crazy. Well, you know, sometimes it would be a little quiet right late at night, but for the most part, it was like eight people tattooing until midnight. I can't more. imagine as a client wanting to get a tattoo at 11 o'clock at night. It was more just the fact that everyone wanted to get tattooed and there wasn't that many shops around at the time compared to now. And people were just taking whatever was available. So people would come in and they'd say, like, when can I get tattooed? And i say, oh, you can't, you can't get tattooed until Thursday next week at uh, 9.30 at night. And they'd go, cool, no worries, book me in. Because they just wanted to get tattooed. And it's just different now. Like, I find myself saying, like, oh, what day do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know? what, what works best for you? And, like, that's much, obviously I'd much prefer that, you know, to not be working till 3 in the morning. But a little bit of me misses it. Like it was just, it was this cool whole other world and we lived in that tattoo shop and we never left and we ate all of our meals in there <laughs> and we all hung out together and I worked with a bunch of fucking lunatics but it was like I had just a really interesting place to be and it just yeah. feels like so long ago. <laughs> I remember like tattoo shops that had like fish ponds in the waiting room and stuff like, and carpet. We had this like, we had, I'm going to Google it later and see if I can find photos of it. It's probably in some old magazine somewhere, but we had this counter that was made all of checker plate steel and it like had this big sculpture on the corner. I can't even remember what it was. It was like, a dragony type thing. <laughs> of course it was a dragon. Classic, like, ch like metal checkerboard. <laughs> counter and then black and white checkered floor red walls like classic like 90s 2000s type of shop that's, that's <laughs> literally what they all look like <laughs> red walls why was that the color red and black <laughs> red black and then the checkered floors every single one yeah i'm it's actually cool. really scarred by that now though like i can't handle being in places that have like red walls and black wall like it's just too much yeah. that's why the walls up here are like baby pink <laughs> like yeah but 10 years time yeah. that'll be the way everyone will be like i can't believe they had baby pink walls in tattoo shops back oh then. my god subway tiles what were they thinking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> industrial yeah. chic ew uh, <laughs> yeah I, it's it's burned it's burned into the memory but i, I miss it a bit but i don't Do you know what i mean yeah yeah. yeah, it's kind of like you feel all that nostalgia for it, but then if you had to live in that world again, you'd kind of just be like, oh. Yeah, I couldn't go back to it now, but I'm glad that I lived through it. And I think that um, I feel sorry for people who've got, who are getting into tattooing in the last few years and aren't going to ever really have to work. And, like, I'm not saying those shops don't exist. They definitely still exist. Yeah. But they're a lot better. And, um, and obviously I think people are a bit more hesitant to get uh, an apprentice these days you know just because there's so many of us and and I think anyone who's lucky enough to break in is is really like they should thank their lucky stars but mm. I just those shops definitely exist but they're, they're just not it's just not really tattooing anymore whereas it used to be the only way you know yeah <laughs> but everything's changing and I think 
like a lot of it's for the better and like even like what we were doing with the not just a girl flash days you know we were so fucking sick of the way we were treated and the way we were ostracized and then we we're like nope fuck it we'll make our own space our own thing and i can still say to this day that it's the best thing i've ever done like same you know it, it it's the best thing i think we created something really awesome the day itself or the days themselves were just uh like magic like just electric the mood in the air and and just the camaraderie and everyone just doing this thing out of pure selfishness so selflessness <laughs> selflessness and, and and just getting to have a really nice time for a good cause and i think i don't know about you and if you feel the same way but i think it definitely changed the mood a little bit for um female tattooing in australia i don't know I think if that's so. like a bit of a brag but I no i think it i think it did and i get a lot of messages from younger female artists like coming up when we started doing that saying like oh this is like so inspiring that i can i don't have to go what, through what you guys went through now yeah it just that and like you know there's, there's been other other worldwide things like what ashley love is doing with oh, what I'm asking for it. and that's so it's amazing incredible. um and all of that kind of happening concurrently in tattooing i think it just it does it opens the dialogue a little bit more for women in tattooing and just women in you know any industry really that's heavily male dominated yeah but we I don't want to say lucky because we did it ourselves, but we're lucky to have got to have created that. Yeah. Um, and I'm really proud of us. Yeah, I'm proud of us too. It's yeah. so amazing. And everyone who helped, like, go us. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, like, you, you have a, a real knack of, like, being able to communicate with people. And I think, like, you were really able to bring lots of different kinds of people together for that from different kind of cliques and groups and really bridge that gap. And you also got a lot of good male allies on board with us as well. Like that, like that was really crucial to making it a success. I think how much you were able to remove the borders between the cliques. Yeah. I think for me, I wanted it to be because we all know that men do tend and, you know, that anti-feminists, not always men, but a lot of people get uh, kind of get their back up a bit when you call something feminist or you or you put it under the banner of, of this is a feminist event. And so I knew, like, even though as much as I know it was a feminist event, I, I, I wanted to try to avoid that stigma so that we could have people uh, on board, you know. If I yeah. was we were ramming it down people's throats as, fuck you, this is you know, this is all about women and, and, and it is obviously, but um, the, the people would have been less likely to, to be open-minded about the event. Yeah, absolutely. And we still obviously had complete fuckwits being like, oh, why, why can't I tattoo at it? Because like, well, you can tattoo at every single fucking thing that's ever happened. Yeah, um, like, well, we'll make a boy tattoo flash day. Like, um, that's literally every that's literally flash day. Every, like, very much day. And I'm not saying you can't come and you can't support us. Just this one one day where you're not allowed to tattoo, so fuck you. Um, no, but I think I think it all I really wanted is it for to be an event where all of the amazing women that we know and like we barely like it was the tip of the iceberg as far as uh, sort of female talent in Australia. And it's just a shame we couldn't have a big venue and we could have everyone tattoo. Oh my god. <laughs> That's um, the dream. Totally the dream, totally the dream. But it was, I wanted it to just be an event where we could showcase our talent and we could raise money for charity and that yeah. was it. I didn't want to have to like, and I just I just wanted that, that to speak for itself, you know? Yeah. If, because people are just so ignorant sometimes about this type of thing and the fact that we were having people being like, well, why can't I try to do it? It's like you literally have no idea, do you? You don't see, you know, that every, every event is so heavily male-dominated. Yeah. It doesn't occur to them. So for mm. us to just have our event, we raised almost a hundred grand. Like we're the best. Yeah. And <laughs> in one day. One day, and we had. I've never seen another flash day that has had as has had as much attention. Yeah. Um, 
or as as positive a reception. Like there's yeah. you know there's been these incredible flash days all across Australia that are people lining up around the block for, but they're not the same. It's not. They know they don't. They don't even come close to. What yeah, we did. and it was we the did. fact that every artist they did not expect anything in return. They were they gave a hundred percent to the charity, yeah. and you had people like Lauren Norrie who raised on their own in one day. It was something like four and a half oh. grand. Yeah, she did. She did the most tattoos like on on our second flash day. Um, yeah, the most tattoos over the over that period of time. Like absolutely smashed it. Lauren smashes it daily. She's yeah, a she's a legend. <laughs> and as well, like it, it's really good to have people like her on board because uh, it just shows like how hard we can work and how much effort that we put into not even like as a charity event, just tattooing in general. How much of a contribution yeah. we make and. I just think everyone who was involved, everyone who came, everyone who got tattooed, everyone should be stoked. And yeah. I, it was I, so positive just seeing people making friends in the line and like while they were waiting to get tattooed. Like people, I've, I've heard that people have still stayed in touch with people they've met at the Aww. flash day. That's just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, when we showed up and there was people like already like, I remember that first day and we were like, is anyone going to come to this? Oh, my God. <laughs> And it was months and months and months that we'd been planning. And then when we showed up that morning and there was already a line, we were just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this is happening. It was, it was crazy. And that first one that we did on the first day in the line, just, like, down around the block, like, oh, just wild. I've never wild. seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because I remember, you know, in the earlier years of my career, like, um, you know, working in male-dominated shops, you know, being told that girls can't get along, you know, yeah, you can't, that- ha- you can't have too many women in a shop. And we, we had at one point 30 something women, in, you know, in a shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a room, all tattooing at once. And I, the only negatives that ever came out of our flash days were comments that we were getting from men uh, or emails that we were getting from men um, or like, ah, uh, just, you know, it, and, and I think like the, what I was saying before about I was worried about working in a shop with all women and it just comes from years of men telling you that women can't get along and women, yeah. are, from their own women are emotional and it's like, okay, cool, but it's actually you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's you? That's you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All, all, of the, all of the drama and all of the fights that ever happened at any shop, I was like, it, it all stemmed from some male insecurity and or being competitive with each other or egos or just, you know, it was never, it was never girls fighting girls. And I think that that's just shit they put in our heads. Yeah. And when it has been, it's often been because we've been pit against each other and told to compete absolutely, and, and forced yeah. to be in that position. And that it makes me really sad. Like I, I, I think of some situations in the past where I've been pit up against other women, whether they be in the same studio or another studio. And it's like, sad because it's like that could have been a beautiful friendship and we could have helped each other and worked together and yeah and I'm so fortunate now to be in a situation where I don't let that get in the way and I have incredible friends all over the world who are tattooers from a- any gender but like n- none of that gets in the way anymore. Absolutely and then you said about us having 30 women in a room and it was just been, it was the most positive magical day of all time that anyone's ever experienced ever so you know it's it's just a testament to that, isn't it? Yeah. It totally changed the way I approach tattooing and the way I approach like running my studio and flash days and customers. Like it's it's honestly like that whole experience from that first group chat when we decided to do it to like to now, like it, everything about not just a girl is it has changed my approach and my career and everything. For sure. I I feel exactly the same. It's great. I wish that, and I wish that I hadn't let all of the the negativity that we got um, get to me as well, because it yeah. does sound a little bit like in the in the lead up, it is just that anxiety of you just waiting for people to to criticize you and attack you. Yeah, I I, I don't cope well with that. Like I face to face confrontation, I'm all about, but if I go away, I'll like let it eat away at me. You know, if someone wants to say something to my face, I'm like, cool, 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 let's go. 
uh, here is my opinion and why that's incorrect. And <laughs> <laughs> but like, but, but just having people being snarky to me on the internet, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's because I wasn't really on the internet a lot as a kid. I think maybe kids deal better with it these days because it happens to them more often. But when <laughs> someone like, comes to me, I'm like, you don't know me. Yeah. Well, why are you being mean to me? I, I don't, I, I, and I let that get to me a little bit. Like we would have people message us and say, why are you raising money for women's domestic violence? Don't you know men are the victims oh. of violence as well? And just, yeah. know, just little things like that all the time. And I'm like, I would take it really personally yeah. because we put in so much effort and, and like our, our blood, sweat and tears into this to do this really, what I thought was an incredible thing and raise money for, women's charities but apparently that's not good enough and I have seen like that no matter what you do someone is going to criticize you yeah and, you can, and and I I started to like reach out to people and say like I don't know well if, if you feel strongly about that then here's a link to go and donate to a men's domestic violence shelter because maybe instead of you criticizing me why don't you just take your efforts and put them into something positive yeah, um, that's it. I was more like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it was you actually who said at the time because, uh, you know, we were both really struggling with the negative feedback we were getting. And I think you said something like, you know, if we were raising money for, you know, brain cancer, you wouldn't ask us why we're not raising money for lung cancer. It's only because we're raising money for women that you have a problem with absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It was really hard as well. And, like, I would have people ring me and say, like, why isn't this person doing it? And I'd be like, well, they haven't contacted me themselves, so uh, why? And it would be like a man, like it would be like a friend of this female tattooer, a male friend, and he would be calling me and saying, why isn't X doing this event? And I'm like, okay, well, she never reached out and said she wanted to do it, um, so I don't know why you yeah. are now contacting me like this is a problem. And and just just every single thing we did was criticised, and I... It, it just is, it was really hard. And I want people to know that so that they can just let people do things and not be yeah. fucking dicks. Yeah, like when someone's doing really something nice, hard. let them do it. <laughs> yeah, everyone can find an issue with anything. And so I think sometimes you have to just, you have to just try to be, try to see the positives in things. And, yeah. And like, obviously, no one's perfect. We're not perfect, uh, especially, like, our first year. You know, we were just figuring things out as mm-hmm. we went along. And it, it is hard to kind of put one of those large events together and please everyone. It's impossible. You can't do it. And I think we were probably too sensitive. Um, yeah. and, and I think maybe you've got to be thicker skin. Like, I can't imagine how hard it is running, you know, like the tattoo expos and stuff like that. I don't agree with 90% of the shit that they do at those no, things. No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> And then, like, but I still do appreciate how hard it would be mm. to, to put on a large event like that um, because you're not going to please everyone. You are definitely not going to please anyone when you're, like, making it and marketing it in such a way. Yeah. And I think we, we, went, we went the opposite, you know. We tried to be really open-minded and really inclusive um, and obviously – when you are, when you've kind of taken that political stance, you are the open target for any criticism. And yeah. Yeah. I just, and I, I, just I to- welcome constructive criticism always, I, but I, I there's totally a way do. to go about it. There is a way to go about it. Absolutely. Um, I know that, you know, and it was things like people, some, I can't remember, somebody had a flash sheet that had like, like pads or tampons on it and we got we got criticism that not all women uh, menstruate. It's like we totally understand that. Obviously we are, you know, uh, supportive of, of all, all the gender spectrum. But that we, artist's experience was as a woman who menstruates and they had a right to express that. Yeah. And so and it's just like you, you can't criticize every like not every single thing in life is going to be completely inclusive. Unfortunately, it's impossible. Um, you know, because if if it, if it is something like menstruation, where it's just it's a biological thing you can't control, it it happens to some people and it doesn't happen to some people. It doesn't mean that we can't talk about it. Unfortunately, for those people who don't want to hear it, um, 
and and just stuff like that. It's like we're trying our best to be a really inclusive uh, and supportive and open-minded event. So yeah. I thought like, we couldn't win for a little while there. No. But okay, it all went great and I was stoked and I would do it again. I'm just, I think I would need some Valium. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think that's why we had to have a break from doing the flash days. It was a lot. I think it after is- that second one, we were like, fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we totally were. And I was just a bit drained um, just mentally for all that stuff. I'm just not built for it. I'm not built to argue with people on the internet and I'm not <laughs> to let things go either, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, if I, if, if I could just have like, you know, have it roll like water of a duck's back, I would, but I can't. I just, t- I just take it all to heart. Um, yeah. And, and I think you do too. And I think yeah. it's because we love the event and we were so proud of it that, we could we couldn't not take it personally. Absolutely, I like I just want to undermine the patriarchy and burn it all the fuck down. But I also don't want to <laughs> hurt anyone's feelings, and it's really hard to find. Yeah, that I balance. don't want anyone to be mean to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go! You've done such a great thing. Oh, here's a medal. Like that's what I wanted. You no, know? <laughs> just give me give me a pat on the head and a chocolate bar, please. <laughs> Absolutely, that's all I wanted. You know, and I wanted to raise money for charity. And we did, and we did that. We did it so well. Yeah. But, you know, we, we did that and that was great. Like I, I remember, I think it was after our first one and one of our charities was the, um, I can't even remember what the charity was called, but it was for an ed- educational program for women in, in Africa. And we'd sent our checks off to everyone and then we got an email back from one of the directors there and she had actually written us a, a really, really beautiful response telling us exactly where the money went to and it helped to put, I think it was 43 women um, through their full like primary to high school education and then go on to do business school. And like just, and these are women who are living in like extreme poverty who would never have been educated, who who probably would have died quite early, yeah. starvation. Like it just, and it's completely transformed the lives of 43 women. And that is just like worth it you know, yeah. alone. I know it's I almost like, is- you know, we're complaining about people saying mean things to us on the internet and then these women are like... Starving. Starving, <laughs> being abused, um, like being sold and child brides and like, yeah, it's, yeah, I feel like that's the power of, of like our position as artists. Like, you know, we've oh, got wait. all this privilege and we can use it to help someone who doesn't. Yeah. It's... It just, yeah, like that obviously overshadowed any negativity that we got and it was just, it was amazing. Um, and I remember reading that email and just like welling up and being like, oh, my God, we actually, it was actually worth it. Um, <laughs> and, and I just was really, really, really stoked on that and uh, so thankful to everyone who participated. Yeah, yeah. And it's really nice. I feel like everyone, like, Every, if not everyone, at least most of us who participated, like I think we still stay in touch. I think we definitely have friendships that are ongoing as a result. Yeah, yeah. and I, I got to meet some tattooers who I hadn't met, who I'd looked up to for years, like Stacey Ann. I like oh, I've been looking so for Stacey tattoos forever, and then you just you have no idea like how how these, especially because of Instagram, most of the people that we know through tattooing, we, we've we've been introduced to them through the internet. Daisy I'd been introduced to her through Tattoo Magazines years ago and always thought she was amazing. And then when I got to meet her in person and she was a legend, I was just like, <laughs> my heart was so happy. And I was just like, I remember at the end of the day, her and I were hugging and I was just like, man, I just want to like come to like Perth and hang out. And you and I could just hang out. It would be really nice and we could be friends. And just things like that. I was just all these little little like relationships that I made and friends that I got to meet and people who I'd admired and I got to meet like that was all just this huge positive that came out of it yeah. as well. It's so great. It's the best. I'm so yeah, proud we of us. Breakfast <laughs> <nice> meetings. <laughs> great. <We're the> <laughs> I really hope we get to do it again one day. Like who knows when do. events can happen again? Yeah. But oh, I know. It's, yeah, it's very strange. And like I know you and I have talked about where it's going to go down the road and we've talked about conventions or doing it as like at, at separate shops more in the kind of format that um still not asking for it is run mm. you know where it's less we we kind of take less involvement and i yeah. think that that would be 
probably better for our mental health. Yes, <laughs> easy. And, and I both were kind of quite, we, we were pretty um, strict about how we wanted it to go down and, and yeah. what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of message we were spreading. And, and, and there's so many, there's so many like um, elements to that mm. that we would have to not, we would have to release the control. And I yeah. think that, that that's, that's a little scary for both of us. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe, maybe if we do want to kind of take over the world, then that's the option. Yeah. I definitely feel like that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah. I think convention I don't know about you, but it stresses me out. <laughs> Dude, I started looking into it and like started planning it and I was, I got like a couple of months into like looking into it and I was just like, nope, no, I will yeah. full on have a meltdown if I do this. Yeah. I think it would, I don't think I have it in me. You know, <laughs> I, I, Claire always gives me shit at work for being like a messy, unorganized, like <laughs> bit of like, she's one of the most organized people in the world. Like you open her drawers like in her tool chest and everything's like laid out beautifully. <laughs> she actually um, like asked me at the end of last year, she's like, no, would you mind if I organized all your drawers for you? <laughs> and I was like, no, go for it. Go for it. Cause I have like, I have like, uh, you know, a tool trolley that has like four or five drawers in it and they are all junk drawers. All of them. <laughs> I've got like, in a few needles in a few and machines all over the place and like a drawer at the bottom you can't open because it's full of crap like <laughs> there's nothing about me that is organized at all and, and it just so to organize like an event of that scale would be yeah I think completely out of my depth yeah see <laughs> yeah. I'm super organized but I'm also like highly strong and so it's just like yeah. not oh. happening yeah I I'm not highly strong. I'm like too low strong. I just don't care enough at all, at all, at all. But I think uh, that's why we worked. We worked well together, and, and with Sash as well. Like we're all very different personality yeah. types, and there was a I did, I did the schmoozing, and you did the like proper actual organization. <laughs> <laughs> I just showed up. <laughs> I, I was like Amy stuff. from Brooklyn Nine Nine with my like binder folder oh, with binders, colored tabs. Yes. All your binders, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all your tabs and your binders. Mm-hmm. No, I was definitely used to like shoot first, ask questions. Like, the <laughs> uh, it was but the we best. Did. We did, yay! We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> well, I think we might start to wind it up there but is there anything anything you wanted to talk about anything you wanted to tell the listeners or um well I'd really like to do some tattoos soon Um, (laughs) not heaps because I think going straight back into the deep end is going to give me a panic attack yes Um, so I don't know slowly we could slowly do some tattoos soon um I I would just like to say that I'm really thankful for uh, everyone who gets tattooed by me or supports me in any way and they've really gotten me through the last couple of weeks, months uh, during this because I still, I'm still getting emails from people and I'm still getting people asking for commissions and, and I've yeah. seen everyone else is kind of in the same boat, you know. I've seen a lot of support by artists, which is amazing. It um, is. Because our government basically doesn't think we exist. So... <laughs> nice that our clients do and that there yeah. is a, a beautiful community of people um out there who've been supporting those who like I, a lot of a lot of people are like me and they they haven't been eligible for payment um up until quite recently and 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 so without honestly without the support of my customers i wouldn't have been able to survive for the last few weeks pay my bills so it's been amazing um so i just want to say thank you everyone i don't yeah. really have to push I've been too lazy to create anything new. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lazy. So, yeah. You're at the 10 year mark. You need the time down. I know. I'm an old bitch now. Everything hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> I, I'm actually quite clear. Claire made a, Claire made a point to me the other day. She's like, uh, to, that she's a bit worried about everyone's hands when we get back into it, that we're going to get sore quite quickly. Mm. So she's, 
reminded me to stretch. So maybe I'll pass that on and remind yeah. everyone to stretch. Get some stretches um, happening. Yoga, get down on your hands um, and just look after yourself because when we get back into it, it's going to be a bit of a rude awakening, I think. so. It is. Yeah. So everyone take care of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for all our listeners, you'll be able to watch the footage of this chat on YouTube and you'll be able to... Well, you are probably already listening to it on Spotify or Apple. Um, You can follow us on Instagram at notjustagirl underscore tattoo for regular updates um, and check out our blog for more information. I'll be posting all of Mel's info in the show notes. So make sure you give her a follow and lots of love. Um, Thank you so much, Mel, for chatting to me today. It's been so good. I've missed you. I can't wait till we can all hang out again. I just want to hug people. I want to go to the pub. I miss yeah. <laughs> Have a beer and a hug. <laughs> well, say hi to everyone up there for me and give them hugs. I will. And same. Have a wonderful day. Bye, Ed.